MSI flew me out and a bunch of other YouTubers for a quick look at the brand new MSI Claw 8 AI+. Plus. That name is a mouthful, so going forward, I'll just be saying Claw 8 for the rest of my life. This video will serve as a quick look because I only really had about three hours with the device at the event itself, but I'm glad that in the MSI Control Center, I was actually able to get this down to 7 watt where we were able to see how much total system power we're using as well, which is great, but I should be able to take it down even further when I get a review unit later this month. So stay tuned for that where I'll have a more in-depth review uh, later this month where we'll have a better understanding and not looking at as much cherry-picked data. So since this is just going to be a quick look video, let's go through some of the slides that MSI showed us at the event, but I'm gonna flavor them and give you a little bit of context to get you a, give you a better idea of what to actually understand about them. So for the specs, they show it as a comparison. And for what it's worth, this is a very bigger number, better type of slide that MSI is uh, showing, but I'm gonna tell you why that's not always great. So up first we have the Intel Core Ultra 258V, which is Lunar Lake versus the Z1 Extreme from AMD on the Ally X. Now the AMD Z1E on the Ally, Ally X and Lenovo Legion Go, that is foundationally a 7840U. 7840U is a laptop chip that is a part of the standard driver set, standard Radeon driver set. The Z1E is not. It is effectively a custom chip, meaning we can only get drivers from Asus or Lenovo whenever they get them. So you'll be months behind whatever driver release is from standard Radeon, which is a bummer. However, on the Intel Core Ultra 258V, that follows the same driver set that comes out as Intel launches them. Now, there's two things here. Number one is Intel is in third place as it applies to GPU drivers for games. They are behind the eight ball in a lot of respects. So Intel is trying to play catch up a lot here. The benefit is that while they are in third place for the MSI Claw 8, effectively as new drivers come out and new games come out, you can be reasonably sure that within a certain time span, you'll be able to get those new drivers and install them without having to wait some arbitrary length of time on the Ally X. So that is a benefit, despite the fact that Intel drivers are obviously in third place. The next bit that is really good for the Claw 8 is it's using 32 gigabytes of LPDDR5X 8533 mega transfers versus the 24 gigabytes of LPDDR5X 7467 mega transfers. Now, what to unpack from there? That is the fastest available RAM for LPDDR5X. There is no better tier of LPDDR5X. So Bandwidth wise, it's going to be the maximum that we can get out of that type of memory. And we have the most out of what Lunar Lake has. Th Lunar Lake only has 16 and 32 gigabyte models, and you have the 32 gigabyte model here. How that presents itself to the system is it's going to be 16 gigabytes for the system and 16 gigabytes of VRAM. That's awesome. Like having 16 gigs of VRAM will ensure that any game that you're going to play is not going to have any VRAM contention issues or trying to balloon up UMA size automatically because games are always going to see 16 gigs of VRAM. And as games go on in the future, being future-proofed at 16 gigs of VRAM, like even Indiana Jones is showing that having more VRAM benefits that game greatly. So this is one area where looking at future-proofing and being worried about that, the Claw 8 having the best available LPDDR5X RAM in terms of speed and bandwidth, and also 32 gigs of it and 16 gigs of VRAM is the best you can ask for today. So that's a great showing. For the iGPU, we don't really have to talk about that. That's already a part of the, the processor itself. So it's the ARC 140V and the Radeon 780M. It's just the iGPU of the SOC or the APU itself. Now, the display. This is one thing that MSI is totally lost in the sauce of the bigger number better type of thing. They have an 8 inch 1200p VRR display versus the 10, 7 inch 1080p VRR display on the LAX. The thing here to take, take away from this is that look, the Steam Deck is an 800p panel and the 7 inches are 7.4 inches, right? So those resolutions at that size screen, totally fine. No one ever says image quality is bad on those. It's great. And it's not a super high resolution that a smaller chip that is going to be power starved needs to hit. So MSI effectively just made their work harder for them. And there's lots of newer modern games that are going to default to a borderless window state. And you're going to be stuck at that 1200p resolution. It'll be grayed out. You won't even be able to change it unless you change the display resolution in Windows. And most users probably aren't going to do that. So you're going to be in a situation where you just made it harder because you have a higher render resolution that you have to hit, even when doing sub-resolutions because there's just going to be a, a fraction of whatever that 1200p is versus 
the 1080p display on the Ally X, which is also too much resolution for what it is. So, I mean, just having a better quality display versus resolution is better. So this is something that I've tried communicating many times, but the, unfortunately people do this whole bigger number, better thing. And in this one aspect, it's not great. Again, the Steam Deck 7-inch LCD version is an 800p display. The OLED version is 7.4 inches and still an 800p display. And I don't think you'd find anyone that says that the OLED looks worse than the LCD version. Everyone says the OLED looks better. Having a better display and a lower resolution is 100% of the way to go at all times, especially for handhelds, especially for today's chipsets. Even next generation, I would still say 800p is going to be a better resolution. This way we're not making it harder for ourselves. So this is one thing I hopefully they do. For analog sticks, they are using hall based analog sticks from the get-go. Now, they don't have hall based on the Ally X. However, Gilly Kid does produce a third-party set that they're going to be selling. Is it ideal that you have to buy an hall based sticks as a, from third-party, increasing the price? No, but you can still get it on the Ally X. As it stands, both analog sticks are great. The battery. Thank you to Asus for making an 80 watt hour battery the standard here. Hopefully going forward, this will continue to be the minimum that we will ever look at for handhelds going forward. In fact, I think 80 watt hour minimum and 99 watt hour as a max. Let's just go to the TSA limit. Obviously, they did such a good job with keeping weight down. These companies can do it. Let's just go to 99 watt hour. Let's push it to the limit. Go to the max because we really want to maximize our battery life on these devices. So 80 watt hour for both is still excellent. One thing that MSI was pushing a lot was that the Claw 8 has two Thunderbolt 4 ports. I don't really think that this is a big deal. The Ally X has one Thunderbolt 4 and one USB 3.2. The display that they had set up was a dock and an eGPU, which you can do on the Ally X. You don't need Thunderbolt 4 to do a dock, like having extra USB ports. Now, you could do two Thunderbolt 4 PCIe devices on the Claw 8. So you can have an eGPU and then you could also have like uh, an Elgato capture card. So you could do that ostensibly. Uh, that would be up to you. Uh, so that is one benefit that it is. It just doesn't seem like that big of a thing that they were really trying to impress upon us, especially for most mainstream pe people. For what it's worth, I'm really not a big Thunderbolt fan and I've talked about this at length. I'm more of an Oculink fan. So that that's pretty much it. Lastly, there's Wi-Fi 7 versus Wi-Fi 6E. Again, the bigger number better. As far as it's concerned, both of these will be just fine. I don't even have a Wi-Fi 7 router. I just recently got a Wi-Fi 6 router recently. A year and change ago, I got a Wi-Fi 6 router. I don't really have much plans to upgrade to a Wi-Fi 7 for, I don't know, years. So if you have a Wi-Fi 7 router, then you'd be able to make use of this. Otherwise, I mean, you know, it's nice, but can you really make use of it? That's for you to decide. We're also going to be taking a look at the slides that they showed us for performance. What's nice is they put both of them at 17 watt. And when we take a look at this, there are clear wins that Intel Lunar Lake has. And they start trading blows a lot as we go from the medium to the middle to the right in this uh, graph that we're, we're looking at here. The point that it, we should be looking at is that both of these are 17 watt, but on Lunar Lake, it uses memory on package. So the memory is actually included in the package power. Now, how that kind of all jazzes out, and we'll talk about it in a second. When I put the device at 7 watt, we were still using around 15 watt total system power. And 7 watt on the Ally X is around that as well. So um, it's not as big of a, of a deal as I was hoping it would be. We'll see where we knit out when I get to my review unit and see if we can't do a little bit better. But just from what I was looking at there, uh, even though we include package power with memory on Lunar Lake, it doesn't seem to really change things all that much. That being said, there's give and take tier, and there are games that are not being shown that would be cherry picked for AMD side. We can show you those results when we get to the review later as well. They also show another slide where it's 17 watt for the Claw 8 versus the Ally X at 30 watt. Now, there's something you have to understand here, okay? 17 watt on the Ally X, then going to 30 watt only is a 15% increase in performance. Even though it's effectively almost like double the power that we're putting into it you should not expect double the performance of the Ally X. It's generally only 15% better performance. Massive diminishing returns start happening there because we're just limited by bandwidth. So we're looking at extremely cherry-picked data here. Don't really take, you know, take this data and then run with it like, oh, Claw 8 is just going to destroy the, uh, destroy the Ally X. There's going to be some games that we can cherry-pick on AMD side to reverse how this looks. So 
just take this to mean that Lunar Lake is very good. It's a very efficient ship. And there are a number of games that Intel has clear wins on. So it's just a good ship. Now, the better thing about Intel Lunar Lake, especially with their AI engine, which I don't think does anything on their AI part of Lunar Lake itself, is how it divvies power. And it does a rather decent job. And they showed off one particular game which is Resident Evil 4, because they both have an 80 watt hour battery and they put them both at the same settings, they basically just put a, an FPS cap. Now, this isn't fair, okay? This isn't fair because AMD will just spin its wheels, wasting clock frequency for no reason. Uh, so we can dial Ally X, we can dial the Z1E manually and do a better job in terms of just hitting a frame rate target and getting the same battery life. We could do that. It's just that the Intel Lunar Lake is doing a better job of doing that automatically in Resident Evil 4. Maybe not in all games that this is going to be possible. Again, look for my full review where we'll be able to kind of show where this happens or not. I did talk to them if they would do some like auto TDP functions in their MSI software. We're not, we're kind of neither here nor there just yet. So just keep that in mind uh, that, you know, fingers crossed that that actually happens. Comparing the Claw 8 or even the Claw 7 AI Plus, they all feature the top actuated switch, which has changed, which we're going to review in a second, uh, a larger D-pad, and their fourth gen rubber for their speakers, which is honestly really good. And we'll, I'll give you an anecdote about that in a moment. But the top actuated switch is really just the difference from where how they looked at the triggers themselves. They are no longer side press, so when you press down them, they actuate directly on the button itself. With regard to the D-pad, now, <laughs> believe it or not, the I was the only one uh, that kind of liked the D-pad. Now, it is not, even though it is shaped and resembles a Xbox Series D-pad, it is not an Xbox Series D-pad at all. Zero. There is no dome-based D-pad at all. It's a membrane-based. So don't expect it to operate like an Xbox Series D-pad. It's... Edges are very pronounced, and you can feel it on your finger. However, that being said, I was able to have a lot of precision with that D with this D-pad, that MSI's newest D-pad, whereas pretty much every YouTuber that I talked about had a bad time with it. So I don't know if I'm just the odd man out here, but I had zero problem at all with just chaining the other dragon, uh, dragon punches, fireballs, hurricane kicks, whenever I wanted. Precision-wise, it's there and I could feel it. So the tactile feedback of knowing what you pressed is evident. But looking at all these other YouTubers, they use D-pads different than I do. So um, take that for what it's worth. I, you may not like the D-pad. Now, the fourth generation rubber that they have for the speakers, whatever they did here, they did a great job. The rubber is just to kind of like show you how they isolate it for vibrations and stuff. This is a true story. I left the uh, the little conference room that this was in, and then when I came back, someone was playing Dirt Rally, and they were just, like, revving the car engine and, like, skirting around. It was so loud and realistic that I thought someone outside in the street was, like, you know, just doing donuts in the street. I was fooled for about two seconds while I was like, what is that? And then I saw he was playing, and I was like, oh, wow. The speakers on the Claw 8 are markedly better than the claw, which was already good. Like, it was quite good. So this is probably one killer feature of what makes the claw 8 so good is that its speaker by far blows all the competition out of the water, and it is really quite good. They even have a show graph of uh, what that's like when they take a look at the frequ frequency response just to show you bigger number better, but for a sound graph. So I will have to believe them on this. As far as actual listening to it, it is very good. They they deserve they deserve a lot of, of kudos here for how, how good it sounds. So uh, just in real life, it's excellent. Now, this thing is actually cool. So one new thing in the MSI Center M is now the, the quick access menu, this quick settings for the Claw 8 itself so you can change settings. It's actually part of Microsoft Game Bar. So... Game Bar used to be separated, right? And you would just kind of like deal with it or whatever. But now it's actually integrated into Microsoft Game Bar and you get all the extra functionality of the MS Game Bar as well. So you can get achievements or other widgets in that Game Bar as well. That's actually a really cool thing. And 
you know, like it kind of seems like in hindsight, looking back on it, like, oh, duh, of course, the quick access menu should be using the game bar on Windows. That's already there. So MSI using this feels like a, a no duh moment, but I never really thought about it. I don't think anyone else thought about it either. That's really cool that they are including it in game bar and it makes game bar useful because before I was just like, I'll just disable this. But now that it's there, uh, this is a, this is kind of cool for me. So I'm optimistic about this. For pricing and availability for the Claw 8, it is $900 and launches on December 26th. So you do get one terabyte of that 2230 slot. So you don't necessarily need to upgrade that. The price, when you look at Intel Lunar Lake laptops with 32 gigs, this is actually a great price. But when we think about it for handhelds, it's very pricey. Now, there are, you know, uh, Chinese handhelds, uh, boutique handhelds that are more expensive than this, especially some that are using Strix Point now are more expensive than this. So frame that in mind when you're thinking about it. But also, there's a legitimate use case of using this device as a a docked machine that you can have to a monitor 32 gigs of ram for lunar lake lunar lake isn't a slouch so the price isn't bad for what you're getting here now in terms of performance and how all that kind of equates for price that's where things get kind of a little muddy so if we just look at it from a handle point of view this may be pricing out a, a number of individuals now they do have the claw 7 version of this which is 800 dollars, and it also releases on december 26th it also has 32 gigs of ram uh, it only has 512 gigs of storage and it's a seven inch display and it doesn't have an 80 watt hour battery. So I would very much recommend the eight inch overall. Having an 80 watt hour battery really is excellent, guys. Do not discount having an 80 watt hour battery. It's big time. I would always just recommend the uh, eight here, even though it's $100 more. Uh, you do get a larger screen, which has a benefit, and the 80 watt hour battery, 80 watt hour battery is better. 512 gigs of more storage also should be included in there. I don't know. The seven kind of just seems to exist there to satisfy people that want to spend a little bit less. I would not like entertain the seven at all. I would only go for the eight just because of the 80 watt hour battery. Again, to wrap all this up and, and say the same thing, I really would only recommend the Claw 8. Even if $900 is too much and you think it's too much, I would say wait for it to go on sale whenever that's going to go on sale, especially by the time it goes on sale. Maybe there's other devices that are out there. The Claw 8 is the only one that I would personally entertain. Having an 80-watt battery, again, it is a game changer. And going to like a 55-watt-hour battery, even though Lunar Lake is more efficient, having a bigger battery just releases all battery anxiety that you can get from these devices and you just kind of play and don't worry about it anymore it's it's really a, a killer feature in and of itself so take, honestly take that for what it's worth i don't think the 80s version is all that big i think the controls are really nice sound is excellent the display is really nice 1200p is a little bit too much they really should have dialed that down we'd be able to get even more performance but it is what it is so that's going to be my quick look for this uh as always thank you to my youtube channel members as well as my patreon members your support really mean means the world to me guys i hope this video is informative as always guys thank you for your time and thanks for watching